quick video about these Seymour Duncan pickups. About a month ago, I swapped the uh, original pickups in this strap and I put a set of Seymour Duncans in there. And um, I had some really insightful and interesting comments about that video. So I thought I'd do another video. Basically, one of the questions that came up a few times was regarding the EQ of these pickups and how they sound less strap-like. So I'm gonna take you through some tones in this video about how I use them. So I've had them for a month now, obviously got a bit more used to them and dialed in my tone a little bit more than it was before. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show some com comparisons and how they can actually sound really stratty. But before I do that, I've collected some new subscribers recently. I'm quite surprised actually, these Seymour Duncan videos seem to be pulling in more subscribers than any of the other videos I've ever done. So I thought it'd be a good time to say hello to new subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing to this channel. Something I've never really done is actually tell you a bit about myself, who I am and what I do. So I've actually been on YouTube for quite a long time. Before I started this channel, I had a previous channel. I was quite an early adopter of YouTube. So I actually have, um, if you look at my YouTube homepage, you can see a link to my other channel. I did a few gear reviews on and things like that. So I suppose the oldest video on that channel is probably like, I don't know, seven or eight years old now, something like that. I decided about five years ago to start a completely new channel because I ran my own studio and I wanted to release some original music. So I, I decided to start this channel to release that music. So if you go back through my previous playlists and well, my previous uploads, you can see some original material that I released from the studio, which is called the West Wing Rooms. And since that point, I've decided to migrate all of my YouTube activity onto this channel. I've never really thought about YouTube as a serious Serious thing. I don't, uh, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube, so I, you know, I follow a lot of guitar-y YouTube guys. A lot of those guys made, uh, you know, made their names and made a business out of uh, YouTube. Yeah. But that's not something I've ever really tried to do. And when I started doing YouTube videos, I was working a full-time job and I just used to do it for fun. And it's taught me a lot about video editing and audio editing and all that kind of stuff. But I really enjoy it. So what actually do I do? Well, I am a professional musician. I do some composition and arrangement for people. I do my own original stuff. I'm running a new band called Five Points Gang. That's my main project at the moment is that band. We're based in London and we have a separate YouTube channel. Maybe I'll put a link somewhere around the screen now so that you can go and have a look for that channel. And we've got a lot of studio recorded stuff that we did live this year. And we're doing lots of gigs in and around London and next year we're going to be doing some touring and things like that. If you want to see a lot of this gear in action, you know, with the band and recorded and stuff live, you can, you can check out our channel. Or of course you can come and see us live if you're in London or somewhere, you know, not too far away. Recently I've been working on a project someone uh, doing a load of mixing and mastering so I, I do like audio engineering type stuff as well. I've only been a professional musician for about two or three years now. I think you have to sort of do a bit of everything to try and make it work so that's what I do. I've done some sessions and you know in general the work is getting more regular I'm getting more work more often which is cool um, but it is a ridiculously hard career choice. <laughs> There's probably some other videos that I'd like to make about the state of the live music scene at the moment and what you have to go through to play live. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Yeah, so that's kind of who I am. I just wanted to give you a bit of background really about me because you've subscribed to this channel and I have ne I've neglected subscribers and I've not been making particularly regular content. So I'm going to try and make some more regular content going forward. That's me basically and if you've got any questions about me you can check out my own personal website or you can check out the band's website. Maybe I'll put those on screen while I'm saying them. Yeah, so thanks for subscribing recently and obviously those of you who have been subscribers for a long time. I know my subscription count is only at like 158 or something like that but that's still 158 people that want to check out this channel and I've had some really meaningful replies and responses as well and messages. That's that's really heartening. Actually, it's, it's kind of, I'd rather have a small number of subscribers who actually communicate and interact, which, which you guys do, asking questions about the gear that I demo and, you know, that feels really personal then. So it feels like I'm making content that somebody is actually watching and appreciating and has questions about and wants to discuss. <laughs> That's 
that's all of that stuff. So actually onto the content of this video. People have been asking, well, yeah, they sound great, but they sound quite dark and they don't do that single coil strat thing. And the reason for that, I think, is because I deliberately kept the EQ on my amp the same when I did the pickup swap. Uh, sorry, my computer's just gone to sleep. So I deliberately kept the EQ the same. So of course, when I swap the pickups, they do have um, a lot more mid-range content, a lot more low-end content, and I'd probably say, yes, a bit less high-end content. So they don't sound quite as chimey and sparkly as the original single coils that were in there. However, that was with the settings on the amp that I used originally. So I'm gonna dial those settings in and we're gonna, re we're gonna listen to those. So here's, I'm not gonna go for a squeaky clean sound because uh, it's just not what I use. This is what I, roughly what I used for the previous video. I've got a bit of presence dialed into this as well. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I'm not going squeaky clean. Um, so you can hear that's the, um, the bass, middle and treble at 12 o'clock on that Marshall DSL. I'm just going to tune that up a bit. Okay, so middle position. I've just dialed in a bit of um, delay. I know that people are going to get a bit annoyed because, oh, but this is um, a really transparent delay, and it's not changing the EQ at all. It's just making it nicer and more fun for me to play. <laughs> So, to me here, this does sound quite fat and humbuckerish. They, these don't sound particularly stratty and single coil with those settings, which, if this was the original pickups, um, as I did in that demo, they would have been much brighter and a lot more presence and high end content. <laughs> Bridge sounds even fatter again, probably. Okay, so um, I totally understand why why people would say that that doesn't sound very stratty. However, if I boost a bit of um, Travel on the app, so this is getting to more where I run things. picking up a little bit. Neck middle. So I'm going to kind of leave the travel pickup out of this because it is fatter than the neck and the mids. So you can already see we're kind of approaching more of um, what you'd expect a strap to do. So I actually go a little bit further than that again, and I use an NXR six band EQ. So I could do this on the amp, but for some reason I, I prefer EQing the guitar before it goes in. And this, I always use this EQ going into the front of the amp. So I'm EQing the guitar sound, not, I'm not putting in the effects loop and then EQing the preamp of the, the amp. Um, 
this this is what I find really gets me, and I'll show you a photograph of the curve. Um, so, yeah, on on the on the pedal. So let's just give you a quick sort of. Um, this is so you you'll see that I'm boosting. All I'm doing is boosting a little bit of high end. So this is before. MXR. So let's try another chord. So let's, let's use the uh, the in between sound. With the NXR. So yeah, you can hear straight away this is getting us into much more stratty territory. Yeah, similar comparison on the middle pickup. Yeah, so straight away we're getting into much, much more um, stratty territory, I think. I think my I think everyone has their perfect strat, and my perfect strat is that glassy, tubey. I can't think of any the right ad adjectives to, to use here, but I suppose slightly scooped neck pickup sound. Really, all I tend to use most of the time is just neck and bridge, and I want the neck pickup to do that sort of bright, shiny thing, but still have a bit of punch. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I want a neck pickup to do. But then I want to be able to bang into a bridge pickup, which is fat enough to take some highs off to almost get into humbuckery territory. So it's about that balance for me. And I think I've just about got that balance right in this guitar. When I go from that nice tubey sort of glassy neck sound, even with all my EQ on and everything, I put it into the bridge.
I'm much more concerned about, rather than like the overall output of pickups or how bright they are and how or how dark they are, I'm much more concerned about how they work in relation to each other. It's that relationship. If these pickups both had less output or, or both had more output, or they were both brighter or darker, that wouldn't worry me as long as the difference between them was the right amount of difference for in, in order for me to get the difference in switching between them. I would find it almost impossible to review a single pickup because it's the whole ecosystem of how this pickup works with that pickup and then how that they both work with the context of the rig that I'm using. I basically think of screaming vans happening on, an, on the bridge pickup. <laughs> Or neck pickup soloing would be sort of the high up sort of fluid stuff. That's when I tend to use the neck. I mean, I do sometimes play solos where I play, you know, up the neck with the bridge pickup. But like the fluid stuff, you know, the faster stuff tends to always be on the neck. So if you look at my playing in, in that, that context, it's quite clear why I would want this dramatic difference between two pickups. I'll just put it back on. I'll turn it off again. That's a really nice bridge pickup sound, and you know I like that kind of sound. It's rounded and it's fullness, it's slightly more Eric Johnsony kind of vibe to it. But if I go into the neck position, that's just not my sound at all. There's just not enough brightness or high end content in that sound. Um, I would definitely say that a graphic on the floor is the best hundred pounds I'd ever spent on pedals because I did a gig about two weeks ago in Tooting Tram and Social, which is a really, really good gig. And we were getting feedback. I was going into an AC30 and we were getting feedback on like 400 hertz or something like that. And actually it was cool. I could just say to the sound engineer, there's my EQ sort out what, whatever's feeding back. And it was great, it just came and dialed out one frequency and all the feedback stopped and we played a great gig. And it may, may sound stupid, like spending 100 quid or 150 quid or however much an MXR one of these things costs, just to boost two tiny little frequencies. But to me, it transforms the whole sound of this guitar. Yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And I'm going to start saying at the end of my videos now, um, please um, share or subscribe if you enjoy this content because I'm gonna try and make more of it and apparently I'm doing something right because people are enjoying the videos that I'm making, so I'm gonna keep making them. Also, my production values will return to slightly higher standards. I had no money recently, so I sold my main camera that I was using and now I'm doing everything on one camera and an iPhone, um, but I will be investing in something else that's a bit better, hopefully soon. Um, but the sound is still, you know, hopefully top quality. So, um, yeah, take it easy, guys. Hope to see you soon.